to Bubblegum Reviews. My name is Steve, and the next review I will be doing is on the movie right here. There we go. That looks a lot better. The movie The Sand Pebbles, which is next to me. This is a second-time watch. First time I saw this movie, I was 14 years old. I watched it at Grandpa's house, and this movie actually gave me nightmares. There's a scene in this where some pretty crazy stuff happens, and I remember having nightmares from it. Anyways, uh, in this we have Steve McQueen... Richard Crenna, Richard Attenborough, James Hong, Mako, and I know there's a few other names I'm forgetting, but the cast in this is actually pretty substantial, and it's pretty well done. A little quick summary into this, is so this is part, it's kind of like, I'm trying to think of what to say, but I'm just going to go ahead. Uh, so, a U.S. engineer ends up getting transferred to the SS Pablo, I think that's what the USS Pablo, the boat, the boat's name. He ends up getting transferred over to that, and instantly people aren't really caring for him. Then when he gets put in charge, they start having trouble in the Yangtze. I'm probably saying this wrong, but the Yangtze River over in China back in 1926, and their their sole purpose over there is to make sure U.S. There's no U.S. Uh, you the, look over for the U.S. safety and also to get a missionary out of there safely. And pretty much a lot of stuff happens in between that. This movie is three and a half hours long. Let me just go ahead and throw that out there. This movie took me four days to actually watch the complete movie just because... I'd watch a half an hour here, I'd watch an hour there, another half an hour, then another hour, like, it was like that, because it was, I felt like that was the better way to do it almost, just because. There was an intermission, I love intermission in films, because obviously that's an old thing back in the day. I think I've seen probably three or four movies that have intermission, I know I saw The Cowboys has it, now this one. I'm pretty sure Lawrence of Arabia had it, and I know there was one other, like, John Wayne film or something like that that had an intermission. I think those are so cool, because it's like, oh, pee break, oh, popcorn, up, oh, refill, whatever, you know? And they play some cool music. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Anyways, uh, so this movie has a lot going on in it. It is definitely a war movie, but it's so much more than a war film. Like, this movie kind of goes end of the war scene and then it goes into like people's reactions to realizing they're in war and stuff like that this movie goes pretty deep it's actually a really well done film it is slow definitely earlier on because i felt myself kind of like uh, okay this is kind of boring and then it catches up I don't want to say closer to the end, but I'd say pretty much at the halfway point is where I was kind of like, holy cow, this is, oh my gosh, let me really pay attention here. Not that I wasn't, but the score in this is fantastic. So let me just mention that the music composer in this is Jerry Goldsmith, who's also done stuff such like Rambo and Total Recall. Jerry Goldsmith has got some top-notch stuff in this. This was no different. This was really good score. Uh... This movie was actually nominated for eight Oscars. This movie, like I said, 1966, but this is big time. This movie was really well done. I can't stress that enough. The cast in this, I already mentioned. So every single one of the people I mentioned did a really good job in this film. Even the other people. One of my favorite scenes in this movie was the, what was it? The don't mess with mama scene. That scene right there was great. That was awesome. The $200, uh, yeah, that was really good. Movie's really long, like I said, but yeah, it has really good scenes, and the ending and stuff is just like, what? But, I mean, yeah. Whew. Definitely worth a watch. I know 
I'm probably not talking to every the whole audience because I know watching 1966 films isn't for everybody. The one part for me that was hard to watch was the racism in this film because there is a lot of that, especially in the early going. That stuff's always hard to watch, but the other part of it is is I know they're putting it in there for the effect to let you know this is how it was, and it's more like realistic, so I get that, but it still doesn't make it any easier to watch it. Uh, so apparently James, or I mean not James, uh, Richard Attenborough won a, he won an award for best supporting actor in this. I, I kind of caught on that he was Frenchy pretty early on, so I was like, okay, this is interesting. And you can definitely see it in his face, but man, he did a fantastic job. Like him, Richard Crenna, and Steve McQueen to me were like the top three, of course. And every single one of those guys deserved an award in this. And I'm a huge Richard Crenna fan. Let me just kind of throw this out there, kind of out of left field. But tell me, I personally feel like Richard Crenna could have been a 007. He could have been a James Bond and actually probably done a really well job with it. Because he kind of has that same style, like almost like a Roger Moore style. So, just like I said, just threw it out there. I just felt that way. Here I was thinking about it, thought I'd throw it. So anyways, director in this, we have Robert Weiss, who this is actually the first of his films that I have seen. And it is definitely a great introduction because it's like, holy cow, this movie was really well done. He also did others as the, such as The Haunting, West Side Story, The Day the Earth Stood Still. IMDb gave this a 7.5 out of 10. Rotten Tomatoes gave it an 85%. Video Hound gave this a 3.5 out of 4. Dog Bones gave it an 8 out of 10. I, solid film. Like, reasons I'd tell you to watch it, it is a solid film from start to finish, but there's obviously those few things you got to get past. And if you do, you just watch a really good movie. To me, it's kind of like Lawrence of Arabia style because it's one of those, holy cow, this was a lot and it was long and it worked. And it actually did. Three and a half hours. I mean, at times, like I said, at times I was kind of like, God, is this going to be forever? But if you sit through it, if you stay through it and yeah, it's worth it. Box office of 30 million on a budget of 12, so 18 million. Eh, I mean, but 1966, so today's money, that would actually be a lot more substantial. Okay, so my interesting fact was two things. One, Steve McQueen only ever won a. What was it? He won a. Uh, he won some award. I can't remember exactly what the award is, because this wasn't. The actual interesting fact, but it was one. He won an award, and it was the only time he's ever won said award. I don't know why I can't think of it. Anyways, the big one was, so, Robert Weiss was so happy about how this movie turned out that he actually had yearly parties with surviving cast members just to celebrate this movie. That's awesome, dude. I hope Richard Crenna was there every single year. I hope they all were. That's so cool. But that's it for this one. Uh, definitely, if you have never seen it and you're, li and you're into old stuff like this, give the movie The Sand Pebbles a watch. It's a pretty crazy film. Like I said, it's a war and so much more. So my next movie up will be the movie here, Air Force One. I'm sure a lot of people have seen this. I know this isn't some crazy, oh my God, movie, but got to watch what I'm watching and I actually do somewhat enjoy this film, but you'll hear about it on my next review, so stay tuned for that. Like and subscribe. Check out my letterbox and my eBay. See you guys next time. Thank you.